Hey guys, welcome in. I know it's late. It's late, it's late, it's late, but I could not let the uh, clock strike 12 without doing um, my message for today. This is our 31 Days of Prevention series where we come together as an opportunity to share information, inspiration, and motivation to increase awareness about domestic violence and hopefully prevent future and ongoing domestic violence from occurring. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marcy Batista. I'm the founder and executive director here at Nine Seconds. We are a progressive nonprofit organization with a heart-centered mission for prevention and an innovative, an innovative approach to the work that we do. Every nine seconds, a woman in this country is either abused or assaulted, and that's simply not okay, but the answer is also extremely complex. It's not simple. Um, I shared, for those of you who follow me on a regular basis, I shared the other day that a young lady uh, just this week was a victim of domestic homicide. She was murdered by her child's father. Um, and, you know, I, I, I shared this a couple of times, but anytime I see that stuff, um, this work gets real personal for me. It gets real personal for me. Um, and I'm, you know, as we close out Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I just want everyone to understand that the conversations can't stop here because the calendar changes. Just because we go into the holidays, we can't stop having these conversations. Uh, in fact, the time period between uh, Thanksgiving and January 1st are some of the highest incidents of domestic abuse uh, all year long. And that's without the pandemic. So you throw a pandemic in there, you throw a lockdown in there. Those numbers have now, they were already in, in historic numbers, but they've really, they've tripled um, in the last 18 months. And so the work that we do is even more important. Uh, and so as we close out this week, I'm really going to <clears throat> be focusing on um making a safe exit, creating your safety plan, what all goes into that. So in part one, we did that yesterday. In part one, we talked about um, things to think about when you're leaving, because one of the things that happens is people tell you, oh, you should just go. You need to leave. You need to exit. But nobody tells you how to do that. And sadly, most women will leave an average of seven times before they stay gone for good. And those are the lucky ones who, who get out alive. But there are uh, a number of women every single year who die trying to exit an abusive relationship. And so this week, uh, we're going to really truly invest in the safety planning aspect, making a safe exit, what you need to do with things you need to think about, some things that are not commonly thought of. And so, uh, like I said, we talked about yesterday in part one, we talked about where will you go? This is what to do before you go, what you need to know before you go. So when you're thinking about a, an, an exit strategy or a safety plan for leaving an abusive relationship, there's a number of things that you can do beforehand uh, to make your transition out of the relationship much easier. Uh, it, it you 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 put a lot of forethought into the the route that you're going to take, where you're going to go, etc. Like we talked about in the video yesterday, but there are things that you can set the stage for so that when you actually make your move, then you have things already in place and you have a much better chance at staying out of the relationship and not going back. Because what happens a lot of times is women get out and they find themselves, they don't have resources, they don't have a place to stay, they don't have the things that they need to take care of their kids in some cases. And then it's almost, they feel like they have to go back. Not because they want to, but because that's where there's a roof over their head, et cetera, and so on. So this making a safe exit and creating a safety plan is critical to the prevention efforts in keeping women safe and keeping them out of harm's way and keeping them out of the relationships once they extricate themselves from it. So uh, tonight, let's talk about some of the things before you go. Uh, and basically, this is 
kind of like uh, putting together, like pre-packing basically. And so if you think about it from all of the things that you need to operate your day-to-day -day life, you want to try and have uh, a bag for each of your family members. So if it's you and if it's your kids, um, you want to have a bag that has all of the needs that you're going to need for the, at least the first couple of days. And so some things that people oftentimes don't think about, uh, again, and that forces them back into engagement and conversation with an abuser, um, you want to uh, write down phone numbers. I don't know about any of you, but I personally, <laughs> I'm sad to admit, I don't remember anybody's phone number anymore. My brain used to be a Rolodex for phone numbers, but technology has made me lazy. I don't remember anyone's phone number. So if having the phone numbers written down is huge and put them in a couple of different places. So give them to a trusted friend or family member um, so that you can access it, but you gotta make sure you know how to reach them. Um, and then maybe have it in your car or something like that. Have the numbers written down somewhere so that you can access them if you need it. If your phone is dead, if your phone is taken away from you, if you leave without grabbing your phone, um, you want to make sure that you have these phone numbers and this contact information written down. On those phone numbers, you want emergency numbers, you want friends and family, you want nearby hospitals, you want, um, if you have doctor's offices or for medical needs for you or your children, you wanna have those numbers in there. So make sure that information is all written down. Do not rely on your cell phone. Going on to the cell phone piece, have a burner phone. Get like, I don't know, a $9.99, $25, whatever, um, burner phone. Just a little flip phone. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just something that you can throw in the bag so that if your main phone, again, is taken from you, et cetera, and so on, you've got a backup way to communicate and get help, okay? Uh, once you have that burner phone, you can add those phone numbers to that, but that even that does not replace the written information. Have to have, have to have, have to have that information written down. When I was assaulted and I got out of the house, I had my phone and I was so discombobulated and confused. I I literally dialed a number I knew from memory that it was somebody who had been a friend of mine for 20 plus years. That's whose number I called. That was the only number I could think of. Even though I had my phone and had my whole contact list, my brain wasn't registering even how to use my phone. And so having these phone, having these numbers written down, guys, I can't, ex I can't express how important that is. Hey, Lisa. Um, so we talked about the burner phone, writing down the phone numbers. Um, get an extra driver's license or a state ID. I know here in Arizona anyway, if you lose your driver's license, you can go online and you can order a new one. Go order another one and just keep your old one, put the old one in in your bag that you're going to pack, right? This is your this is your safety bag. Um you you always want to make sure you have ID. Um if you have a state ID, same type of thing. I don't know how it works for other states. So depending on where you're looking at and watching this video from, um, check with your local area and see if you can just order an extra one. Uh, but most places, even if you have to go in in person, if you tell them, that, I mean, they're gonna replace it if you lost it. So just say that you lost it, take the one that you're no longer, the one that you say you're lost, that's the one that goes into your safety planning bag. Um, your passport, uh, if you've got a passport, make sure that that is someplace secure. I would recommend putting that into your safety bag. Uh, I keep mine in a safe, but if I was trying to escape uh, from an abusive situation, that's not the that's not the place where it should be because it's not easily accessible. I've got to get to the safe. I've got to get it out. I've got to. So ha all of this is about making it easy. So. It's easy and it's safe when you make your exit. Um, have some cash on hand. Uh, if you've got, I say on average, 200 bucks per person, 
give or take. Do the best you can. Have at least a hundred bucks stashed away. Uh, that's going to get you a night at a cheap hotel if you have to do that and some McDonald's for you and the kids. So that's at a minimum, stash a hundred bucks in your safety bag. Um, I would recommend a hundred, 200 bucks per person though. Um, if custody is an issue, if, if you've been through a divorce or if you're going through a divorce, you've got temporary custody, whatever, any kind of legal documents that you have stating that you have custody of your children, that should be in your safety bag. That's huge because you. the last thing you want is for them to call the police on you, say that you've kidnapped your own children and you have no proof that the children should legally be with you. So make sure you have your custody documents with you. Um, to that point, especially for your kids, make sure you've got the birth certificates. Um, there should be a copy in your safety bag. Preferably a an original copy, a certified copy, but if you don't have original or certified, just make a photocopy of it. Something's better than nothing. Put that in your safety bag. Their immunization records for school. In some cases, depending on where you're escaping to, you may actually have to re-enroll your kids in school. You're going to need their immunization records. And it can be a period of time before you can, if you have to request them from a doctor's office or if you don't remember the doctor, that type of thing. Um, so have those immunization records in there. Um, let's see what else, uh, insurance documents, life insurance, medical insurance cards, um, at least have photocopies of all these things, guys. I'm not saying you have to put the originals in there, but have photocopies of them so that if somebody asks you for the information, boom, it's here. Because I'm telling you, if you don't already know, when you escape an abusive relationship under any context and circumstance, your brain is not connecting to these things. So you have to do these things before you're ready to go. Get them get them organized so it's, it's a grab and go type of situation. Or even better, have the bag at another location. You just have to get to that location, right? There's a couple different ways to do that. Um, medical records, medicine, um, especially like diabetics, if they're... Um, epileptics, you know, if you've got medicines that you take on a daily basis, at least put a couple of days worth in your safety bag. I can't stress that enough. If you leave on a Friday and your doctor's office doesn't open until Monday and they can't get you in for another three days, and this is medication that you need to live on day to day, you see my point, right? So make sure you've got medication in there. Um... Any housing documents, so lease agreements, um, mortgage papers, um, I think that's pretty much it for housing. The big thing with lease agreements and, and the mortgage documents, you want those um, in case you're trying to get back into your property because somebody could say, oh, well, you abandoned it or whatever. You want proof that your name is on that, that house, that apartment, whatever, and for apartments, if your name is on, as long as your name is on the lease, you should also in advance check with your leasing office and find out what the rules are concerning domestic violence. I know here in Arizona, most apartments here will let you out of a lease if you've got documentation of domestic violence. They may require a police report, whatever understand and make sure and that's what i'm saying this is all about before what to know before you go do these things before it's it's a it's a grab and go situation and get all your stuff organized um let's see spare keys right you run out of the house you don't have a key to get back in have a spare key in your safety bag also if you're gonna go to somebody else's house a friend a family member um a co-worker Ask them if you can get a spare copy of their house key because if you escape in the middle of the night or you escape at a time that they're not home, now you can't get in. So put a copy of the key to your house and to the place you're going if it's a residence of someone that you know, put those in your safety bag. Um, at least two to three sets of clothes for you and, every, and each of your children. 
um, pajamas, night clothes, or uh, underclothes, a couple of outfits if it's, you know, something for school, something for casual. If you're transitioning between seasons, you might want to throw a jacket in there, a winter coat, whatever. You want to try and make your safety bag, you want to be as prepared as possible. Here in Arizona, it's pretty much flip-flop weather all year long. So for us, it's a little bit easier than if you're someplace where you're where you where you have season huge seasonal changes like summer, spring, winter, fall, all that type of thing, because you want to keep that in mind. So updating what's in your safety bag. Same thing like if you change phone numbers or change anytime you change any of the information that's in your safety bag, you need to update your safety bag, right? Um, so we talked about change of clothes. Um, take some, if you have kids, take some familiar items for your kids. Um, it may not be something that you can, if it's something that they use on a day-to-day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day -to -day basis that they're going to miss, obviously you're not going to snag that and stick it in your safety bag. But if it's a certain, I don't know, a certain stuffed animal or or something like that, take them, put something in the safety bag that they're familiar with. Because this is a, remember, this is a huge transition for you, but this is a huge transition for them. You understand what's going on. They don't understand what's going on. So you want to try and make this transition as easy on the kids as possible as well. Um, and then take some personal mementos for yourself. I would recommend um, putting baby pictures of your children in there. Um, you know, family photos of maybe your parents or your siblings things like that things that mean a lot to you that are irreplaceable because a lot of times what happens when you leave if your partner maintains the property and stays in it you may not have access to those again and beyond that some of them are so manipulative that they'll use those personal mementos, knowing that they mean a lot to you, to hurt you even further. So you're no longer in the house. They can't touch you. They can't put hands on you. But burning your personal property, destroying you know family heirlooms, things like that. Make sure you keep um, put all those things in your safety bag as well. So that's just to give you guys kind of an overview. Thank you, Lisa. Um, it's kind of give you guys an overview. Uh, did I say birth certificates? I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on my, I made a list too, because I knew I would not remember everything. Um, but birth certificates, if I didn't already say birth certificates, make sure that's in there for you and for your children. But I think I did say that now that I'm thinking about it again. But anyway, that's the message tonight. What to know before you go. Um, making a safe exit, creating a safety plan is a forethought out strategy. The, the least effective and the most dangerous is a grab and go. In other words, you're running out the door with clothes on your back and if it's in that type of an environment, you're probably in, in, harm, in, in deadly harm's way. And so this allows you to think these things through before it gets to that point and you can plan your strategy, make sure you have the things that you need for yourself and for your children in advance while you're still able to think clearly. Keep in mind that, um, you know, if you're packing items, like I said earlier, that someone's going to miss on a daily basis, those you might wanna just leave alone because the whole idea of this is to do this under the cover, right? So you don't want anyone knowing that you're that you're creating this this exit bag, this safety bag, right? Um, and then get the safety bag to some place where you'll have access to it, some place where your abuser is not going to be able to find your safety bag. I've had women put them, excuse me, in their trunks before. Excuse me, the trunk of their car. Dude goes, wash their car, opens the trunk, sees it, boom, he's off the chart. What is this? Da, 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 and, and it creates a whole thing. So when you create these safety bags and, 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 and put all these things aside, get them someplace where 
they're not going to be discovered. And I would recommend leaving that with, um, you know, for me, when I was working in corporate, I would keep stuff at, in my office a lot. I would keep it because I was always at work. So, you know, if you can take it to work, if you've got a locker at your job, you know, and it'll fit, put it in your locker at work. Um, take it to a trusted friend or family member. That may not be the place that you're going to go and stay for refuge, but that can probably be somebody that can hold your stuff so that once you get out, you contact them. Hey, I need to grab my bag. Boom, done. They're safe and you're safe. So that's kind of it for um, the what to know before you go tips. This is part two. If you missed part one yesterday, we talked about um, where you're going to go and kind of thinking that thing through and talking about um, some things that you want to consider when you're deciding where you're going to go when you do make your, your exit. Remember, guys, the goal of this is to make extricating yourself from these, these dangerous relationships as safe as possible. We want you to live to tell the story. You know, there's there's nothing wrong in in saying and asking for help and saying what's going on. And I know it can feel embarrassing. It can feel sometimes dehumanizing. I mean, for me, when I went to the hospital, it was humiliating to have to tell somebody. But it was obvious what had happened. But to have to tell the story was humiliating. But guess what? I live through it. And that that that's the goal. At the end of the day, the uh, the goal of all of this is to keep you safe, keep your children safe and prevent further abuse from happening. So, that's the message for today. I'm not even going to say if you hear something, share something. I'm just going to say share it because somebody is not thinking about these things. And we can't afford to have any more women die unnecessarily at the hands of an abuser. We can't afford to have any more children die because of domestic violence. There's no reason for it. It can be prevented. We we all, this is all of our responsibilities. It's not, it's not a black problem, a white problem, a rich problem, a poor problem. It's a human problem. It's a human issue. And it takes all of us to curb this and to say that it's not okay. We all have to get involved and we all have to speak up and do our part. So share, share, share. Lisa, I thank you. I know you've already shared the video out, um, but you just never know what people are going through, guys. You just never know what people are going through. And on that note, I will end it for tonight. It's super, super late. I'll get this updated to upload it to my YouTube channel. That's where part one is also located at. And as always, guys, if you need me, I'm here. You can DM me. You can contact me on 9seconds.org. Hit the contact page. My phone number is on there. My email address is on there. And we will do our very best. We've got a team of advocates and trainers who are willing, ready, and able to help. So that's it for tonight, guys. Have a great rest of your night. The little teeny tiny bit that's left because it's super late right now. And if you're watching this on a replay in the morning, well, good morning and thanks for, for, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with another tip for part three of making a safe exit. And I will talk to you all then. Take care.